Hi, today we're going to integrate Lemon Squeezy inside of Toddle. So, what is Lemon Squeezy? Maybe the question here. Lemon Squeezy is a merchant of record. So, what they do is they handle the payments literally for you. They have legal entities that are registered for sales tax, for VAT, for GST, and they are like the seller of record, the authorized seller. So whenever a user buys something using the Lemon Squeezy checkout, they actually buy your product from Lemon Squeezy, and then Lemon Squeezy will take a 5% cut, pay the taxes that are needed, and then after there was, you know, like 30% was cut off of what you made, depending on what, um, you know, what area you're in, or what area you are selling to, um, you will get the rest, and then you just pay income tax or corporate tax, ask your CPA what tax you have to pay on that, but you don't have to deal with VAT and all that regulation, especially if you sell to Europe and Canada, those things can get complicated. So this is what Lemon Squeezy does. They're like a shield company, like a, like kind of like a, like a middleman, but it's, it's completely legal. It's owned by Stripe. It's compliant. And this is what we're going to integrate today. So let's go to Toddle and you know, I just added like in total a white page with a button. That's all I did. And we can actually call that button pay now, right? And then we would make a custom um, API call on click of that button. But the most interesting part when using Lemon Squeezy is working on the back end. So here are the documentations. We want to look at the checkouts endpoint. It's called create a checkout. You can find that in their documentation. And in order to facilitate the dashboard, uh, the checkout on the dashboard, we're going to use Xano as our fast, scalable, secure, GDPR compliant, whatever compliant backend. So here we're going to go to APIs and I'm just going to create a new API group. In order to do that, I'm going to click on the top right corner saying add API group. Now in here, I'm going to type in simple lemon squeezy checkout. Simple lemon squeezy checkout, just like that. Now I have my simple lemon squeezy checkout API group. I add a new API endpoint and I call, go to custom endpoint here and I call it checkout, just like that. Now I can save this and now I can go to add function. And in here, I'm going to type an API and we're going to go with an external API request. Now we got that in here and now we click on import curl. And now we're going to get back to our lemon squeezy documentation to create a checkout. And we're copying their curl command. We just copy the whole thing. And now we're going to go back to Xano and in here, I'm going to paste the whole command just like that. And we're going to click on import. And now we see we got all that configuration inside of Xano. Now we got to customize a few things and add our API key. But in order to save the progress, let's just click on save for now. Now, what we want to do is we want to get our Lemon Squeezy API key because as you can see, Lemon Squeezy requires us to pass on authorization. In order to get your API key, you're just simply going to go to the Lemon Squeezy checkout. You're going to go on settings and you scroll down all the way down here. You'll have API and you just simply click on API and you can click on plus and I can do video Xano Toddle API, please make it more descriptive. <laughs> and then I can copy my API key. And um, right now I'm in test mode. So you sadly won't be able to generate checkouts on my account and uh, deposit your money on there. I know you would love to, but sadly you can't. And now I want to go back to Xano actually. And I want to go here on settings and I will see environment variables. We go on manage and we want to add the API secret that we copied as a variable and we call it lemon squeezy secret, just like that. 
And now in the value, I'm going to paste its value in here. I'm going to save. And now I'm just going to go back to API. I go to simple lemon squeezy checkout. I click on checkout and actually I made the mistake. This is a get endpoint. This should be a post endpoint. So we need to update this. I can click on get and I want to make this post because we're posting data. That was my mistake. But Xano makes it super simple just clicking on them to change the type. So even that mistake was worth it just to show you this amazing feature. Look at that. There are no mistakes. They're just mistakes. You took the wrong thing. Next time you take the right thing. That's how we learn. Now we just go to our API request and we scroll all the way down when we are at the headers. Interesting. The headers are all the way down in Xano and like normally it's opposite, but interesting. Uh, so we got the headers. And in here, we see this authorization header. I click inside of the authorization header and we see this random bracket saying API underscore call. We want to copy them and we go on add filter. All the good features in Xano are always hidden or small. We go on add filter and I type in replace. What the replace filter is doing, we can do a search. I want to search for this specific string, for this specific pattern. This is what we have in there. And I want to replace it with my environment variable of lemon squeezy secret. Now I got that in here. Now if I were to call it, we would get an error message back because we have not added our store ID yet. But you see the request goes through. So now we want to make more customization to this. You see it says custom price. We more than likely don't want to add a custom price that would override our normal price because we want to use an existing product that we have created inside of lemon squeezy um, as our you know and just have its price going on now we can go on uh, part options and we go to enabled variants in here we can add an array of all the variants the user can select from their checkout to keep it simple we're just going to close it here and we're going to go to our store, we go to products, and I already have created a product inside of Lemon Squeezy. So I can copy, go in here on the three dots and go to copy variant ID. Now I go back in here, we only have one variant ID in here. And then we can keep the button color as is. I want to remove the discount code because I don't like to give discounts. And then on the user ID, we'll go back later to that so we can identify which user paid. And then we're going to go all the way down here on, um, on, you see this here, stores ID, stores ID. In here, we do the store ID, right? So we go and let's just open, let me squeeze in another tab. And we go in here and we go on settings general, right? And Actually, we want to go to stores. Where do I have my stores? Uh, stores, stores, stores. Here we go. We got stores in settings. And you see every store has an ID. I just copy my number for the store I want to use. Now, I'll paste that in here. I scroll all the way down. And in here on selected variants, right? This is where I will have, you know, my variant that will be the default. I want to go back to my tab where I have the variant ID. That's here and copy the variant ID again. This would be the selected variant. I will put that in here. I will save and now when I run this, uh, you will see that the member ID, so the user ID that we want to pass on dynamically needs to be a string. So I'm going to add an input here of text and I call it user underscore ID. And in here, I'll be able to pass on a user ID in a string, right? And I go to the lemon squeezy API call and we go all the way to user ID, which is added as an integer. And I go on my input and add the user ID so we can identify who paid. Now, if I would rerun that, we will get a um, non-compliant JSON API document. The member ID must be a string. Okay, it seems like Xano is doing some formatting. How about if we type in text? It still gives me that error. Very interesting. Um, let's actually keep the custom price enabled and let's just look over that. 
member ID must be a string. I'm wondering if I go to, let's see, we got the discount, user ID. What happens if we don't pass on the user ID? Let's reload. It still gives me that error. So that is interesting. We got the lemon squeezy secret. That is a string, right? And we got those information here. How about I go to those numbers because Xano turns numbers automatically into integers and we go to cons and make it a string. So this number is passed on as a string. And then we go to the ID instead of having this be an integer, we scroll all the way down and go to const and make it text. And then we do that with the other ID as well. Or we just skip the user ID for now. Let's see what it tells us. Now it says the entries at the field must be a date after today. We don't actually want an expiration date that would just add more complexity. So turning the integers that Zeno automatically turns into text uh, into numbers into text solve that problem that we have. So here we don't need we don't want it to expire. We want people to be able to pay whenever they want. And now you see that worked. So now we can go back to the user ID in here, enable it. And let's see if that works. Beautiful, that was successful. And you see, we get our checkout URL back. Beautiful. So now I'm just going to go on the three dots and I type in here create lemon squeezy squeezy checkout create lemon squeezy checkout link and I call this when I go to output I go lemon squeezy API lemon squeezy API just like that update references now we want to do dot notation because this here contains our API key we don't want to send that back to toddle because we don't want to expose our API key so I copy the payload and I go in here I go to create variable and I call this pay underscore link I go to value and I go to my variable for lemon squeezy API to find the sub path, paste the payload in here, go on define, expand, expand on response, expand on result, expand on data, expand on links. And actually, let's let's go here again. We have in here links. We don't actually need to send links. We got data inside of data, right? We got attributes. Let's track this back where this thing is, here we go. So this seems to be, um, we got preview URL. So this seems to be nested in checkout data. No, we got checkout options. We got product options. We got attributes. So inside of attributes, we got the link. So in here, we go on attributes, we expand attributes. And in attributes, we got the URL and that should be our checkout link for this session. Let's add a stop and debug under here. No, not create a variable. <laughs> Let's add a stop and debug under here. That helps us debug everything in Xano. I go on pay link. Now I go run this again. And yeah, that is our pay link. Beautiful. We can copy that link and open it in a new tab. Just like that. And I think here we go. And we got everything set up in here, just like that. But we still have our custom price. So we want to disable the custom price that we have in here, because that would override our product pricing. Beautiful. Let's save this again. And now we can open this. And we can open that in here. And as you can see, we got that information beautifully in here. So we see that email, I got changed my email, there's nothing about Wiz on my channel anymore. But uh, you see, I'm logged in because I'm logged into lemon squeezy, I'm getting that information. Beautiful. So I can now connect everything to toddle. So let's just actually call this define 
lemon squeezy check out link to find lemon squeezy checkout link i remove my stop and debug in here and then i go to response i click on here and i go on pay link i go on safe i go on publish i publish everything i can rerun it beautiful now that api is working now you can make it dynamic and you know like pass on a dynamic very variant id but we just want to keep it simple here so i can copy my endpoint url i can go on toddle and now I can click outside of here and go to APIs. I click on plus, I call this, actually let's call this checkout. I wanna remove auto fetch. I wanna make sure this is a post API. I paste it in here. And now if I were to turn on auto fetch, I would say, hey, I need to add the user ID. So I add my dynamic query parameter of user underscore ID because as you can see, that endpoint requires us to add a user ID and we use this user ID from the input to link it dynamically to a user ID to Lemon Squeezy so that we can identify the user, very important. And now we go back in here, we got the user ID and actually wanna just create a variable with the user ID. We call this user underscore ID. Ideally, let's do one, two, three, and so on. Ideally, you want to have that come from your AuthMe endpoint to have it dynamic, but or from your cookie, and you would then work with cookies that would be even more stable and more robust. If you want to learn about that, we got those complex things that are always needed when you implement things with payments, because you want to make sure that you actually receive the money. So that is actually an important thing. We talk about that at office hours in the membership. We got a five hour course just on payments, making sure you get paid, handling charn, handling chargebacks autonomously in Xano, handling, you know, if people cancel, removing their access, limiting the usage, the usage threshold of what they can do, all that complex things. We got that all in the membership and we got hours of content coming every day towards you. So, and we already have, I think, over 30 hours of educational content and we add one to two hours on there every day. So during the week, five days a week. So it, you get a great value. Um, I think that $79 that it costs a month, I think you get that, you get that money out there at day one, uh, to be quite honest. And also everyone who will sign up for the No Code Pro Code membership will get free access to Despia Mini, but I'll give you more information on that. So you'll be able to wrap your Toddle um, web applications inside of a native shell that will allow you to publish it on the App Store with features like push notifications. It will not be the full Despia because the full Despia thing is a native app. This will just be a wrapper, but 80% of people just need a wrapper because they don't need Face ID. They don't need vibration feedback. They don't need to turn on the flashlight. Like who needs that? So the simple version that pretty much doesn't cost me anything to run uh, besides effort um, is available for all members for free because there are no costs for me to host that apps or to do the build process because it's a super simple app. So that's free for all no code pro code members and only exclusively available for all no code pro code members and let you know once it is fully available once the editor built in toddle is ready but now let's go back to where we stopped let's go back to toddle here and we got our user id that should come dynamic and i go in my api call and on the queries for user id i'm going to add my variable for the user id now, if I turn on auto fetch just to trigger it, you'll see I get that link created. So that's all we need. So now I want to go on this button here and I want to go on event, click, on click, I want to run the checkout. So if I click on here, I would now see that in my API with auto fetch off, we got the checkout URL, but we're not navigating to it yet. So I go on button, click, and on success, if the checkout URL was successfully created, I'm going to go to um, go to URL, I go on FX, 
I bind the URL to the data that the API returned, which is the checkout URL. And now, as you can see, if I go on this page, if I click on here, I will go to my lemon squeezy checkout page. And let's see if we see some parameters. Okay, here we go. Why is it? Does it say custom one? What happens if we don't make a custom one? Interesting. And cool thing is they use Stripe elements as well. So that's fun. But here you go, you got that information. And now let's do actually a test payment. Maybe not with my real credit card. 4242, 4242, oh, 42642. Um, and let's add. Here we go. Test. Beautiful. Uh, calculations. They don't have auto. Let's see. Let's look at Google uh, random address in Utah. Here we go. Here we go. I love those websites. Here we go. Beautiful. Great for testing. We'll put that in here. Utah. And I go in here. I go Salt Lake City. Beautiful. Let's put that in here. Let's go with zip. Uh, here we go. Let's put that in here. Let's let it run. Here we go. Ah, I got to pay sales tax. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay, let's pay this. And we'll be able to successfully pay. Beautiful. Now we go on done. And now I will see, you know, my, my purchase and all of that stuff. And here we go. If we now go to lemon squeezy, and I go to orders, or maybe under subscriptions, we will see that I got my description in my uh, subscription in here. And yeah, I'll be able to generate an invoice and do all those things. And we also have received information using the webhooks as well. So that is also um, available, but we're not talking about webhooks in here. We will be talking about webhooks inside of the membership, inside of office hours. Um, and yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you now know how to integrate Lemon Squeezy inside of Toddle. And if you need more help and it's very important to get payments right, we got the courses, we got the educational resources, the daily office hours on nocodeproco.com. If you want to join the membership, the link is in the bio below. You get a great value. Let me actually show you how the membership site looks from the inside. Right now, you will be greeted and you'll see like the latest thing. Three hours ago, I just added a one and a half hour SaaS auth course for Toddle and Xano. And then yesterday I added a two hour SaaS backend course. Then some people ask sometimes their questions and then I respond like with videos and tutorials and all of that. And we got components. We got a template for a fancy file uploader. So I can actually copy that in here, right? And just go to my Toddle project and oops, let's click outside of here. And I can, I could paste it in, but I think maybe Toddle did some changes on how their copy and paste works. So I'll be updating that. <laughs> it, it should work, but I think they, Andreas, how can you change the way the pasting works without letting me know after I build a component library? Unbelievable. But if I were to go to my file pond uploader, that is the one I'm talking about. I should be able to paste it, but I may need to update the syntax. I would go on my main branch here and uh, here we go. You will see that we got this beautiful file pond uploader um, that is fully synced 
with the backend that allows you to upload files. It's now sending it to Xano. And when I delete, it deletes it from Xano. After I fix the copy and paste functionality, that will be working beautifully. Um, but then we got the office hours, you know, people ask their questions. We got more components. We got a slider for Toddle, how to make multi-step forms. And this is just like a great resource. We got exclusive events, right? Like webinars, um, you know, we got extra templates um, in addition to the YouTube videos because they don't contain templates. I just teach you how to do it. If you want to make it quick, you can pay. <laughs> and then we have a total classes course. That's not the classes video. This is like a whole over one hour course just on, you know, showing you how classes work very, very educational. And you always get transcripts with the courses. So you can expand on here and you can search for specific things. Maybe I want to look for the keyword web flow and I can click on here and then skip Hi, to the part today. in the video where I say hey, that. Today we're going right? to look So we got that built in in the dashboard with AI. So you can have like those, you know, you can, and it's also linked with the search bar. So let's say you have an issue. Um, with I want to prevent scroll, I can do prevent scroll. I should be able to load that. And then I see everything that we talked about prevent scroll, even inside of the office hours. I can go on here, right? And you know, I can see that was an educational resource that helps you with prevent scroll, or I also made a course on prevent scroll for Salima. So I can also go in here and I can do go to back to prevent scroll and I see prevent scroll on pop up and we got a whole video showing you how to do that. And if there's something that you want to have a video like that about, and I did not know that this is a thing that people have issues with, we got this beautiful thing called ask for help. You can ask a question in there and then I'll make a video or you can go to video exchange where you can ask a question and then I'll make a video about it where you can give inspiration for the content that should be on the membership site. So we got great, great resources here. Um, we also have for the WIST people, but we, we stopped doing things for WIST um, actively in here. We still help everyone, but you know, we're not continuing to develop WIST tooling, right? But we still have cool mini tools like reverse proxy for WIST, right? You would otherwise have to pay $30 for a separate service to, to, to configure that. You get it for free if you're a member and it would be $30 per project. If you can offer that to your clients for free, great resource, great value. You can also self-host WIST. We have like a service here that lets you self-host WIST for free, right? You can run my Python functions and then we got all kinds of great stuff. We also got WIS templates here, right? We got actually something like Canva for WIS. That's pretty, look at that. Like you can like, you can like move that here and like, isn't that cool? So we got templates, great templates, Canva for WIS. <laughs> here we go, or where did it go? Oh, I lost the membership site. I can go to help at nocodeproco.com. We also got a uh, premium Xano snippets. So we got very cool stuff here, but then most of that, we got the Xano tutorials with all that information here. Um, we got a webinar for backend basics. We got an authentication crash course. We got total tutorials. That's a word, right? With all that stuff, we got Stripe elements and total um, file upload preview, um, you know, SMS auth inside of total. Um, that is like a two hour course. And then like micro, um, Toddle micro SaaS, how to build your micro SaaS in Toddle. That's another one hour course, Toddle basics course. Um, we got great resources here and they're being added regularly. And then we got the office hours. We got them every day from Monday to Friday from um, 9 a.m. to um, starting at 9 a.m. And they go as long as they have to go. Um, and then we also have the recordings for all the past office hours. So if you couldn't attend it, you can still see, or you can also submit your question a day before if you can make it. And then you will be, I'll just be able to answer that and share my screen and show you how that works. So we have hours and hours and hours of educational resources in here. And yeah, 
I just this was just like a little overview of the community of the membership. It's more than a community because we also put like asynchronous learning with courses with templates um, in the spotlight. We got a whole template for a SaaS. Um, then actually, let me share you that as well. I'm I'm very excited about that one. There is a whole boilerplate for a pre-built SaaS with authentication, with everything that I build exclusively for members. And I think people who are not members don't know all the stuff that we do. So I just wanted to take the time to share that with you as well, because that's very cool. We got the Stripe SaaS boilerplate with everything set up. And, you know, this is why we got office hours, so I can help you set it up for Paddle or whatever payment gateway you want, right? So there is the sense behind that. I can log in with an email. Let's say I don't log in with an email. I get this beautiful pop-up, hey, please enter your email. Now I add, hey, at nocodeprocode.com. I click on request one-time pin. You see how beautiful and how the animations work? Now, I just got an email with my pin, but I think it went into the sp- to the spam folder. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, here we go. I got it here. Got the email. I can put the code in and let's just actually enter a wrong code. Now you see, hey, your OTP is incorrect and I can actually have it resent, but let's add the right one and now it removes it. Now I can do on four, three, five, eight, one, one, request one time pin. And now I'm on the dashboard, but I'm on the free plan. So I can run the free API requests in here, but the paid API request, if I try to call an API that's paid, we have it deeply protected so that your business will not go bankrupt on people using your AI without paying going through the back door. If I run my API, you will see you're not a paying member and it immediately opens Stripe. So now when I pay and do 4242424242424242, 4246, 4242, 4242, 4242. Here we go. And I start my free trial, right? And then I will build it. We got it all set up with Stripe Building and all the webhooks and all that stuff, right? Now it will be processing. It takes a little bit. And now I will be redirected. Oh, I changed the URL because I published it to staging. So <laughs> let's go back here and let's open the live app here, right? And now if I were to go on slash dashboard gotta fix that and you see the banner to please pay is removed and i can run my paid form api call it will say hey you're paid so we even have the template to protect your apis based on if users are paid or not and they can still run the free apis so we got this whole boilerplate and then they can also log out right and if we log out and go to dashboard right we will be then redirected because it says no no no, you can't be on there and even if we go on inspect elements and disable JavaScript, that should be all the way down here somewhere, disable JavaScript, right? And we go back to dashboard in here. We see that nothing is loaded because we disable JavaScript. So our content is fully protected on this solution here as we utilize total server set rendering to render that information. So if you want a super secure, super protected SaaS that has the, we also have the automations. If users do a chargeback, their plan is automatically canceled and um, access is removed immediately so they can't use their product anymore, at least the paid features. We got different tiers. So if you want templates for that stuff, we all have that in the membership already. So thank you so much for watching. Actually, let me turn that to private real quick. (laughs) <laughs> so you can copy that. Um, and thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that. And if you want to join, the link is in the bio to be a member of nocodeprocode.com to get all the exciting perks. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that. And see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.